Hi there, I am Tony and today we are, we are going to do another unboxing video. Welcome to At Tony's Garage. So, as you already know, I just moved out and I need to add all the, my model cars in the vitrines that are behind me or and on that wall. So today we are going to do an unboxing like I did on Saturday. Uh, but today we will have the smallest box from the mall. So let's begin. So this is the box that we are going to unbox today. Uh, quite a lot of models, um, various brands. I hope you like them. Okay, just going to put them there. And let's start with the with taking the boxes out of the main box. First one is the hammer. And now I'm going to make quite a wall full of model cars. So please have patience until I get all the models from this box. So as, as you can see, there are quite a lot. You know, you have a lot of models on the when you start to get tired only by getting them out of the main boxes so yeah this is a crazy addiction and we're out okay i will uh, sort them out and uh, we will see each other in a few moments okay guys let's continue with our uh, unboxing and we will start with the first model this is a gift that i received many years ago it is a Mercedes-Benz 190D and when I say 190D I want to say 190SL uh, made by Welly at, if I'm not mistaken, at 148 scale it's more of a toy than a diecast, than a collectible but it, uh, it has a lot of sentimental value for me and I like it a lot Okay, moving to the next one now I will start with my 164 scale collection and uh, unfortunately I only have 4 models and this is what also a gift that I received many, many, many years ago. This is a hot rod by the, uh, made by Hardwells, a car that I like a lot. And unfortunately, it's very, very hard to find uh, hot rods at uh, 143 scales, but it is what it is. The next three ones are from the Fast and Furious series. So this one is a Dodge Challenger. That probably seen in the movie. We also have the Mustang from the Tokyo Drift. That was my favorite Fast and Furious movie. And of course, Dong's Charger. And maybe one of the signature cars from the Fast and Furious franchise. Okay, moving on to the 144 scale. The first one will be a military Humvee. This one <coughs> is a plastic model, not a die cast one, but it's quite well made and uh, it was very cheap. Unfortunately, since at this moment I will not, I will speak by myself and not using an AI, I cannot check the prices in the same time. But if you have any uh, question regarding the prices or any other questions regarding these models, let me know in the comments and I will try to answer them as good as possible. Moving on to some BMW cars that have a very interesting box. This is a BMW X5, as you can see. So from outside, you cannot see anything. But if you are doing like this, the car will open. If I'm not mistaken, this is an auto art model. It's, it's very detailed, you can open the bonnet, and the details are quite amazing. The, this type of packaging is uh, quite similar to the BMW dealerships packagings. Some, quite, some may like it, some not. I am quite biased regard, uh, regarding this, but hey, the model car is awesome. Okay. Moving on to the next model car, still a BMW, the M5, the one that had a detail in it, and not my favorite car, but from the M5 series, but nevertheless a fantastic sedan. The next one, this one is a first free series, and it seems like, like I didn't 
cage it properly. So after this uh, this clip, I will need to, to fix that. But uh, thank God, it has no uh, no damage. So this is something that I need to do after. And the last one from the BMW series is one of the coolest M3 cars ever made. If I'm not mistaken, this is a mini champs model. One that I like a lot. Okay. Moving to the next ones. We have a Premium X model. This is a Chevrolet Camaro RS. Give me a few moments to open it. And this is it. Very nice, nice muscle car. Okay. We will continue with the muscle car. This one is still a premium mix model, but it's a Ford Mustang. A Mustang that uh, raced at uh, Rally Tour de France. Something quite uh, unusual for a quite big mass American vehicle at that time compared to the European competition. But this Mustang looks very, very nice. Has some nice details on it. Has the Rally Tour de France sticker on it and in front. I like it a lot. Moving to the next one. Now we will go to an Italian car. This is a Ferrari. A very nice Ferrari. Ferrari 500 TRC. Ferrari that it's not red as most of Ferraris are, but it has a wonderful blue on it. And the bonnet is removable. But it seems like it doesn't want to. Here it is. And the Ferrari engine looks quite quite well for this pair. I'm very pleased with this model. Okay, moving to the next one. I need to, to fix this as well after the after I finish filming this clip. But hey, this happens when you transport 1010 some model cars. The next one is also a Ferrari. This Ferrari actually won Le Mans, if I'm not mistaken. Give me a few moments to check. Yeah, it's the Ferrari 250P that uh, won Le Mans in 1963. Not a premium model, but the details are still nice. I'm happy with this. It was made by Jolie Model, an Italian brand. I don't think that they are making model cars now, but it is nice to have a model that is made in Italy. And not in China, like almost all models are made these days. The next one is a modern one. It's a Porsche Cayman from Norway, if I'm not mistaken. This is also a dealer edition packaging. But the car looks excellent, like you can see right now. Very pleased with this car. Okay. And now moving to a Japanese race car. This is a Nissan. Give me a few moments to unbox it. So this is a GTA, Nissan GTR LM Nismo, a car made for the, especially made for the Le Mans race. But unfortunately, Nissan uh, is not a very lucky brand when it comes to racing at Le Mans. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the best position they had until now was the fourth, fourth place with another Nissan that I have in my collection and I, that I will show you in the future. But this car had no luck at all. But it's pretty, it's very, very pretty. Okay, moving to the next one, another Premium X, I think that this box will have a lot of Premium X models, which is an XO brand, decent brand, especially for the money, I'm quite pleased with them, I don't have any complaints to be honest. So 
So this is a Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, a car that you probably know already. But this one has a, a catch. And if you're watching this car from this angle, you can see the usual SLS AMG that everybody knows. But if I turn it around, you can see the interior. The, the luggage space, the interior and the engine of the car. And if I show it, if I show it to you like this, this is a car very similar with the uh, two-face character, if I'm not mistaken, from Batman. So very interesting design for this model car. Model car. That, uh, to be honest, this was the reason why I bought it, because I like the details on the right side. And I find it quite an interesting vehicle and model car, of course. Okay, moving to the next one. This is a Volvo from a magazine collection that I couldn't find in Romania, of course, but uh, I found it in the fair in, uh, in Copenhagen, if I'm not mistaken. It, it is quite a nice car. Very interesting style to, um, to box this vehicle, these models. And here it is. It's a Volvo police car. Very interesting design. My camera has a habit of uh, zooming on human bodies and that's why I find it quite difficult to focus on the model car but bear with me because the car is nice it's very nice okay now we'll move to a driving school vehicle from Italy and if it's from Italy of course it should be either a very exotic vehicle or a very small one and in this case it's a very small one not the smallest Italian vehicle but it's going there so, have a little patience. And this is not a Fiat 500 as we are used to it, but it's bigger brother, the Fiat 600, a vehicle made for driving, right? for the driving school. The difference between it and the 500 is not that big. It's, the design is pretty similar. It's still this, it still has the same coolness level. And I like it quite a lot. Moving to the next one. Another Volvo from the Volvo series. This one, if I'm not mistaken, is a concept car. Because based on it, another Volvo that I don't remember exactly was made. But this is the Volvo ACC. Pretty wide car. Here you go. The model car is nice, uh, especially for a collection magazine, for a uh, collection series from uh, magazines. It rolls beautifully. Not something that I really care to be honest. It's from uh, Atlas editions, and it's nice. And the last car that I have from the <coughs> Volvo series, and probably my favorite Volvo from all time. Volvo T1800. And it's a gorgeous coupe car. Two seater, fantastic design. I don't know why Volvo didn't make didn't make this type of cars anymore. But this car is gorgeous. Okay, let's move on to some Americans now. We have a Stutz. This is the only Stutz that I have in my collection. Huge vehicle. It's unbelievable. It's hard to believe that this car is a two-seater, or at least two-door car. Having in mind in mind how big it is, but as a model car, it looks fantastic. And just to see, the details are nice. And it's not something extraordinary, but for the money and for the model, I have no complaints. The paint quality is very nice. I like these two tones, uh, paint job. But to see the comp comparisons between an American Tudor car and an European Tudor car at 141st, 43 square from the same period of time. So this Stutz is huge. Yeah, but I like it a lot. Okay. We already discussed about my English, so I will improve it, but until then, bear with me. I know I'm aware that I make a lot of mistakes. This is the first clip where, when I fully recorded myself, so 
I'm probably a little nervous, but hey, it is what it is. We need to start from somewhere. And by saying that, I present to you the Corvette C2, another premium mix car. It's a fantastic design. I, I like the simplicity of the design from that period of time. And this Corvette is one, one great American design. Okay. Now we are going to a Japanese car. A Japanese car that doesn't want to get old from what I'm seeing. And this is the beautiful Nissan GTR. If I'm not mistaken, this is the GTR black. Even if the colors are black. Quite detailed, quite nice. G Nissan GTRs are one of those model cars that are quite hard to get to perfectly as a model car because even if it's very very detailed when you will see one in real life you will notice that the real one is quite wider and lower than the, <coughs> the, the ones from the model cars and I have I have quite some model cars with GTRs and all have the same let's say visual issue even if the quality is very good okay moving to a British convertible give me a moment please to open this without breaking it no, please. Yeah. another premium mix car and this is the 1977 Jaguar XK SS very cool car if I'm not mistaken this was the model made after the car that was driven by Steve McQueen I might be mistaken but this was a Steve McQueen vehicle. I love the red interior, quite some nice details. It's a nice car. Okay, moving on to the to my all-time favorite transporter vehicle. This was a masterpiece from my perspective. This is the, the Ren Wagon. I think that this is how it's used to spell it, but I'm not sure. From Mercedes-Benz, an absolute beauty. Too bad it was destroyed, the real one. But at least Mercedes made a, made a copy of it, that is in the Mercedes Museum in Germany right now. The model car is awesome, I, I love it a lot. Uh, maybe in the future, and tell me if you want, uh, I can make a versus thing between this model from Premium Classics and uh, a Premium one from CMC. CMC. Uh, you have seen it in my uh, in one of my previous uh, videos. That is a Premium uh, model. It costs, I think, five or six times the price of this one. But I like them the, the same amount. So please let me know if you want to make if you want me to make a versus video with this one. Another premium mix vehicle. This is another police car from Stockholm. Stockholm police vehicle, a Volvo, but not from the Volvo series that I showed you earlier. Earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a Volvo 740, a design well known by now. in the Stockholm Police livery. Quite a cool car. Okay. Moving to another American muscle. This one is from Greenlight, from the Fast and Furious series. And is a Ford Grand Torino. Another huge car, but with a very, very nice design. Greenline made a quite a very nice uh, job with this 143 scale models, especially these ones from the Fast and Furious series. Too bad that I didn't manage to get all the all the models from this series, but in time maybe I'll get them. Very nice muscle car. Okay. What do we have next? Hmm. Next, from Atlas, we'll have a Porsche 911 Turbo. 
a model from 23 years ago, from 2000, but that is still very, very beautiful. It is a design that we all know. Quite a nice model. I don't really like the black interior, but uh, because you cannot see the details, as, especially on camera. But the overall uh, feedback for this vehicle is that for this model car is that is very, very nice. I like it a lot. Okay. Now moving on to a, a racing, uh, to a racing Porsche from Premium X. I really like this old Porsches with a very wide body, body kit, and those gold, gold rims. It looks absolutely amazing. Quite a big fan of this type of cars. Very nice car. Another police vehicle, still from Premium Mix, but this time it's not a Volvo. And actually it's a Saab. Saab a company that doesn't exist anymore, but that used to make very, very interesting cars. And this is a Saab 900E. In the Swedish police livery. Very interesting car. And we only have five models left. So, as I said before, this might be a shorter video. But a pretty long, long one for me, having in mind that I had to speak the entire time. Range Rover Revolt, tuned version by Hammer. Quite interesting model. I like the idea of uh, having white rims on one side and black rims on the other. I like the red interior. It allows you to see all the details for this car. Quite an interesting vehicle. Not my choice for a red vehicle, but as a model car, yeah, it's awesome. Okay. And now we are going to move to the last cars from this box. And these are made by a Romanian company from my country, Dacia, or Dacia, like we call it right here. This is a Dacia Sandero in a dealership packaging. And because it's in a dealership packaging, it's quite hard to get it out without breaking it. Okay, so this is Dacia Sandero. Quite a small hatchback. I don't know, like dimensions, you can compare it with a Ford Fiesta, something like that. But it's a little higher as a, uh, from the ground. And a little cheaper because Dacia is quite a cheap car and good for the main main stuff. Good. Moving to the next one. The next one is a Dacia Duster again in packaging edition. Very very nice packaging. But the cool part about this Dacia Duster is that it's not uh, a normal duster. And instead, it's a racing duster, a racing car that participated in a rally competition by LM Prost. And if I'm not mistaken, won the competition at some point. So, very interesting approach for a car that usually is a small SUV. I like the, the rally format. And after the duster, the Logi, a vehicle like a minivan, let's think like that, that uh, plays in the rally format. As a model car in a racing suit. Quite interesting model. And the last one, the last one is not a Dacia, but it's a Renault. The Renault is the owner of the Dacia company, and it's a Renault Megane in the same type of packaging that doesn't want to get off easily. This is it. Renault Megane. Another hatchback, a little bigger than the Sandero, but quite nice. Okay, so this was the unboxing from today. Thank you for staying at this until th this moment, and we'll see you again in the next one. Cheers! <laughs>